She awoke and thought about Ugali, thought about all the qualities in him that she missed, his peacefulness, bravery and playfulness. Since her parents had died, as well as a loss of a deeply close friend, she had lost so many qualities of her song, like playfulness, until she met Ugali. Notes that she loved so deeply, that for a while now had been the sleep within her. Bravery, that song, she always wished to grow more of within herself. Willowoo closed her eyes and breathed gently, gentling her mind to settledness, imagined what it would feel like to be that brave. No, she thought, my way is boldness. Bravery to me is blue. My boldness is ro rose gold in colour. A small feeling of it twinkled a hello inside her. She opened her mind wide to the power of bravery, the colour of it, and the colours of it washed through her, widening the small feeling until she felt cloaked in it. I will give, I'll give you time, my love, a little every morning until you are real, she said to her growing song, towards being this new brave self. Then she reassured her playfulness that she would have her time for play and went on her way. Chapter Nine. The following afternoon, Wang Dugali awoke. Canopied by trees and covered in earth mud from his slope tumble. He scratched himself, licking each scratched area until he was, well, cleaner than before. Then he stared up at a yellow curved beaked wheel wall, circling it with his two babies overhead. A proud father teaching his young ones how to ride the wind. Drinking in the sunlight of the wind, that was as much a part of them as their flying, as their feathers, as their beating hearts. They never questioned this. Wang Dugali stared up at them for a long while. A feeling of wanting to fly caught his heart and he thought of Wulawu. She was like the sun to him, and he missed her again now. As the wheel war birds glided over him, he looked up, up and up, and rolling over backwards, and lay for a moment, then turning his head to the side, looking briefly, briefly at the ground for anything to lick up, finding nothing, he rolled onto his feet again and pootled on down the forest path. Spring goose flies through autumn summer skies, leaves to falling snow. Seasons pass to settle at last, and then things forgotten grow. And with the right response to a new coming of a once, that unstoppable flame will show. Something watched him go. The something watching Ugly made him stop, turn around and sharpen his thinking and say, I, I can't see you, but me here, so you. He looked about him and saw only forest to his left, and a continuation of vine and small tree-covered cliffs that he had fallen down to his right. Then he knew where the something was, and walked up to the cliff face of Uja Vine, which sprung back as he touched it, revealing a lacework of old dead vines. He brushed them aside with his snout, and there, there was a face staring back at him. A very, very old-looking carving of a creature with big nostrils, carved into the cliffstone. But that was not what watched him now. 
What's watched him now was a memory, a memory of this face, its pad fluffed paws, and the rider half worn away by time. The rider was still there enough, though, a handsome looking Wooler Queen, riding a Groloom in mid chase. A royal chasing game Oogly knew they used to play. Oogly remembered where he had heard the story. When padding past an old dark heirloom tree, with its gurgin covered root framed dark holes, promising deep, often dangerous depths, but also offering a quick look inside for a snuffler of momentary dangled interest. In he had gone, into the root framed caves of the tree. He smelt the root nuts and dug them up. His digging awoke the, an old work father, a brown rooty leather face, who grackled up the passages to, uh, to his cave. The work father had called him, called him into one of the bigger root chambers, where he had told him the old story. By sending the pictures of the story into Wang Dugli's head, of the royal Grulum and Wooler chases, before stealing his nuts and disappearing again, grackling into the darkness, leaving him alone in the chamber, staring into the darkness of the tree's deep, dark caves and the moist underworld oom. The royal chase was one of the few times big nostrilled grulooms were happy to be ridden, unless the wooler rider was a whirl master, a charmer of animals. But even in the days of the royal chase, they were rarely found and almost legend. By the way, whirl means sweet, gentle stroker. The runner, the chased, was usually a male wooler who was chosen by a lamai wind flower. The flowers were called by a chorus of tones sung by the wooers. The flower comes down from the high mother sky that cradles their world. Her soft warm winds the only safe place, hatching place for the light fluff seeds, and they drift down to the circle of singing wooers and choose a singer who then runs off with the lamai flower, clutching safely in their hand, or daringly in their hair. If the flower escapes the runner during the chase, it will dance among the trees for a short while, but always close to the chosen runner, as it is bound to their song. It is a dangerous chase for the runner, for the grulooms chasing them are strong, but they are often not as fast as a wooler. Although a wooler is as, is as fast in the trees as on the ground, the runner is not allowed into the trees unless the flower escapes them during the chase. Now when the flower escapes, this is the time that the wooler queen, queen riding the grulooms can also take to the trees, and if the runner is caught by the queen, then they can be claimed by the queen. If she chooses. Wang Dugli did not know what claimed meant, and did not think to ask, but the old work, fa work father's grockling giggles told him that it was a good thing. If the runner still holding the flower is surrounded and caught by the grulooms on the ground, he is still not allowed into the trees, and must roll and jump and try to escape. Very occasionally, at this point, the runner is trampled or tussocked by the grulooms, and their body and their body returns to the earth, and their spirit to the forest. <coughs> During the chase, the runner will use joy fire, joy fire power, which they acquire through the excitement of the fast chase. With this power. Focused in their hands, they plant the flower at the right moment. 
when it, is, it too sings its silent song to the heart of the runner. And help the little, and they will help the little flower to grow roots, to become a lamai bush. Wang Dugali saw the image in his mind of the Wula running, runner holding their hands over the place where the flower was planted. They imagine the bush growing tall and strong. This bush may one day be fed on by a big nostrilled gruelum. The berries turn to fl flyer flutes in the gruelum's tummies. Then, when ready, in a bubble of wind, they pop out of the bottom of the gruelum and up to Father Sky's clouds to become windflowers once more. Our Wang Dugali returned from the memory of the story back to where he was, and as Ugli slowly turned around and looked at the cliffy glade he was now standing in, the more he looked around, the more he began to recognize the area, the more the memory got bigger and billowier, and its tail stroked circles around his tummy. He felt sick. He knew this place and could feel his past calling to him there, but he could not remember this past. He sat down, and sat, and sat. Someone else arrived. The someone knew she was late, but she thought sometimes late can be the right late to make the best of the moment and arrive in style. And there he was, still there, staring at the rock he held in his paws. She smelt sadness and missing coming from him. So she watched him for a while. He looked her way. So she stepped out boldly, out of the forest and into the glade. What Ugali saw before him was a striding bush of leaves with arms, holding a knobbly staff. It strolled boldly towards him, tripped over a foot-sized stone, and came to a hobbling stop. With one hand, the bush creature thudded the knobbly old staff on the ground, just a leap away from him. With the other hand, the leaf creature reached up to its face, covered by leaves, and took off the leafy hat that was also her leafy mask. Now, standing before Ugly, was a twinkle of a wula, a very old smile twinkle of a wooler. Well, where is she, hmm? Young snuffler, where is your travelling partner? Oogly dreamed off, staring at the sky. The old tatty wooler stepped forward again, banging her staff three times upon the ground. The shells and nuts tied to the staff, shick-shackling Oogly out of his dreamy staringness, casting away the sickness that he was feeling in his tummy. Kind eyes searched him for where he was. Then, from her tung vine sack on her back, she took out a small skin pouch. She approached him. Take one good sniff. It's all you will need, hmm? Ugly sniffed the sweet bitter smell that cleared the wooziness from his head that he had not noticed until now. The old wooler looked carefully at him again and said, Fear, you know it now. You knew it not, yes. But you must, must and may again, and remember. It is the one you must laugh at, and woo. A noise when Dugli's make when they are in danger, or run. Wooming is a noise your forefathers made when the need was there. It will happen, if need be, no wonder. It will happen, will happen. Ugly watched her circling him and sitting down, blocking his view of the now covered carving of the Grulum. She studied him again and closed her eyes. Ah! Now me see, now me can see. You know you've been here before. 
You did not know why. You knew this. So, met fear first time, huh? Hmm? Well, no worry. Who oh, will tell? Who will tell? But first, little Wook Bang Doogly, when did you lose your Wooler traveling companion, hmm? And where, hmm? The old Wooler looked about, as if sniffing the air, but she smelt nothing. Oogly said, Me fell. Two suns down. Big drop. Don't know. Her here now. Like. With a little snork, a small tear dropped from Oogly's eye. Old Wooler said, Hmm, then here we stay. She come. Ta, tee -hee -hee -hee. she will come. Or must be called. Hmm, we shall see. End of chapter nine.